Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Go No Go show here on February 23rd. Alex Cole, how are you, my friend? I am fantastic. Thanks. How are you? Doing great. Just, uh, you know, topping off my coffee cup. Yeah, I've been dragging a little bit today. I'm going to have a sip as well. Yeah, just enjoying enjoying a little Stock Charts TV cup of tea, you know, <laughs> getting me through the day. Alex, let's uh, let's dive into the markets and uh, see what's going on from a trend perspective using go to go charts in this cross asset heat map. What are we looking at today? Yep. So there's been a lot of bad uh, bad vibes this week, I suppose, with equities taking a bit of a tumble and falling away from the recent highs. But uh, we're still holding on to the fact that on a weight of the evidence approach on a daily time frame, equities are still in a go trend now. We are seeing, of course, these weaker aqua bars, which have started to dominate, um, not the strong blue bars that we saw when the go trend originated. Uh, but equity is still hanging on to a weak go trend. We're seeing treasury bond prices in a no go, which, of course, means that rates are rising. Mm. Commodities rolled over, staying in a no go. A little bit of uncertainty this week, but still painting pink no go bars. And the dollar, the lower panel here, a string of strong blue bars now for the last three or four days. Absolutely. When we look at that cross asset perspective, right, knowing that we're in a rising rate environment, uh, FOMC uh, meeting minutes released, uh, saw the market jitters on that. Uh, let's dive into a chart of the S&P 500 real quick, just on a daily basis to look at that, uh, I guess, a little more destruction to the GOAT trend. A few, few more headwinds at play from both the U.S. dollar and the uh, interest rates. Um Looks like we've broken below support, Alex, uh, and I'm certainly seeing the gonna go oscillator breaking below zero. Mm -hmm. uh, times look tough for this go trend in the U.S. equity space. Yeah, the, the go trend is definitely struggling. And we talked about this level that you can see, hopefully with my crosshairs, was a level of support from these prior highs all the way back to this prior high on the chart on the left here. Those were obviously broken this week. But more importantly for us as users of go, no, go charts, we don't expect negative momentum when a go trend is in place. So the fact that the oscillator was not able to hold the zero line here, uh, think about what happened the last time we were in a go trend and unable to hold the zero line, uh, we then saw a deeper correction. So this is concerning for the health of the go trend. Remember, if we are in a go trend, we shouldn't see excessive selling, which is really what negative momentum tells us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, potential bear trap. I saw you sort of outlining that uh, secondary level of support. Um, we, we've had a, a lot of conversations with clients and analysts looking at uh, any number of trend indicators, uh, whether you're talking anchored VWAP or multiple moving averages or uh, at any of those tools that we use to identify trend. Um, mm -hmm. And we're in a real congestion zone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not, not to say that that gives us... Um, any further evidence about which direction it will break, but this is a very important inflection point. Uh, whether we break below uh, or or bounce off uh, will be very telling for the longer term trend health of the S and P five hundred. Uh, but let's uh, let's take a look not just at U S equities as uh, as investors. We don't want to suffer from home bias. We want to make sure that we're paying attention to opportunities wherever they exist in the world. And of course, in a, in a very frictionless way, ETFs provide us access, uh, at least at the country level, to getting some exposure outside the US. So Alex and I have put together uh, some global equity uh, relative strength maps for a number of our clients who have a go anywhere mandate. And so when we look outside the US, we want to see what is outperforming or underperforming the S&P 500 benchmark. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're looking at here is on this REL map, uh, top two panels, we've got uh, the Eurozone uh, and the Spanish index, both uh, steadily outperforming the S&P 500 uh, throughout 2023. Yeah. Alex, any, any commentary here? Well, I think what's interesting is, is that for quite some time, we were talking about how the rest of the world was outperforming on a relative basis to the S&P. And then over the course of the last month or so, while the S&P or the U.S. of domestic equities tried to enter a go trend, we saw that change a little bit. You can see a lot of no-goes on a relative basis. But as you said, the areas of outperformance still, these top two panels, as well as Mexico here, which has been outperforming for some time and now in a strong relative go trend to the S&P. 
Absolutely. So it's important to keep in mind that as investors, uh, we, we, we don't want to have too narrow of a focus. We want to make sure that we're paying attention uh, to our allocation opportunities, even outside of U.S. borders. All right, let's take a look at a couple of those macro forces that are influencing uh, the trends here in the U.S. equities. Uh, let's start with the chart of the TNX. Uh, we had a fresh, uh, fresh move into a go trend and, uh, as, as bonds are selling off and we're seeing those interest rates rise. Yeah. And we see that there's been a string of these uninterrupted strong blue bars as the go trend has come back into rates. We can see the oscillators above zero in positive territory. Uh, we do see that we are perhaps being turned away by prior high resistance, mm -hmm. um, but definitely a go trend in place as price continues to climb. Uh, today clearly has, has pulled us back a little bit and we are seeing a counter trend correction arrow. So remember, that means that in the short term, we may see prices struggle to rise higher because we're seeing momentum cool while in this go trend, but definitely a go trend still in place. Absolutely. Uh, perhaps uh, finding some resistance at those late December uh, intermediate highs in rates. Uh, but we don't, we don't try to predict. We try to uh, just listen to what the market is telling us. Uh, and certainly those rising rates uh, over the last week have caused quite, head, quite a strong headwind to uh, further advances in the equities markets. All right, Alex, let's turn away from the TNX and, and take a look at the US dollar. Uh, we use the UUP uh, ETF uh, as a dollar index proxy, um, so we can get a view on volume of, of how this is trading as well. Yeah. Um, talk to us about what we're seeing this week. Yeah, very much like what we're seeing in rates. Uh, we know that treasury rates and the dollar can either provide a bit of a push or, or provide some, uh, some headwind for equities. And we're seeing a go trend back in place in the dollar, strong blue bars as price rally. Again, there is a natural area of resistance here. We saw support several times at this level and then resistance several times at this level. That's the concept, of course, of polarity, where something that was resistance becomes support and vice versa. So there is a natural level of resistance here, but strong blue bars in a go trend. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, corollary to the US dollar, let's pull up a chart of gold. Uh, everybody's, uh, everybody's friend uh, through the end of last year and uh, suddenly rolled over yet again yeah. into no-go bars. What are we seeing uh, this week in gold? Yeah, so really not looking good on gold. Strong no-go purple bars. Oscillator broke below zero, leading us into this no-go trend well in advance of it as price corrected from the highs but definitely a strong no-go in place. Um, momentum in negative territory, uh, not looking so good for, uh, for gold. Absolutely. And then let's, uh, let's take a look. Uh, we'll stick with this commodities thread. Let's take a look at U.S. oil. Yeah. U.S. oil, I mean, we hate this chart. is really, really mm -hmm. choppy. Um, so what we tend to do and, and what w people will advise in this kind of scenario is to zoom out and, and see what's happening on a larger time frame and you can see that sideways action on the weekly time frame represented by a no go trend and so what we're seeing on the daily is just all this movement within this larger no go time frame so having that multi time frame perspective knowing that the weight of the evidence on a larger time frame is telling us that we're in a no go perhaps that can help you understand what's happening on the daily chart um, it's not crashing you know moving very slowly down oscillator continuing to find resistance at the zero line. We're at zero again right now, so we'll see if we get turned away again. Um, but price slowly moving, creeping lower in this no-go. Absolutely. Now, uh, as investors have found out in, in 2017, uh, there, are, there are more than four asset classes, Alex, uh, and the emergence of digital assets as a store of value and uh, potentially one day, uh, even something useful in, uh, in modern commerce. Let's take a look at a REL map of uh, cryptocurrencies to the S&P 500. Now, I know uh, many, many investors have been very reluctant. Uh, certainly the, the collapse of FTX, the scandal surrounding Sam Bankman-Fried has turned a lot of people away from allocations into, uh, into the crypto space. But again, uh, the utility of technical analysis is that we can let the market be our best analyst uh, and let the market decide uh, where there are opportunities and where they aren't. So on a relative basis, and we can we can change that uh, top symbol from oil to uh, the S&P 500, mm -hmm. even in a rising U.S. equity index, we are still seeing outperformance. 
from a, a number of the largest cryptocurrencies by market cap. Uh, yeah, so this, is, yeah, this is very ahead. interesting. Definite outperformance on a relative basis here. We're, we're using the top four cryptos by market cap, um, excluding some of the, uh, the ones more cash related, Tether, Binance. Um, but we've got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and Ripple here. And you can see how all of them have started to outperform equities. And we did see, of course, that strong run in Bitcoin of late and this really nice, strong looking go trend. So cryptocurrencies in general, seemingly outperforming equities. Absolutely. Now let's uh, let's dig into one of these. Let's take a take a look at the chart of Bitcoin. Uh, what's what's been fascinating is uh, had a pretty solid rally without a whole lot of fanfare, a lot of, not a lot of coverage uh, in financial news media of uh, of the cryptocurrency space. Perhaps everybody uh, uh, still still sticking sticking to the negative side of the uh, sentiment index on cryptocurrencies generally. Uh, but talk to us a little bit about what we're seeing in terms of that uh, that recent pullback, the negative yeah. momentum, and and now where we're at today. Yeah, I think it's important what you mentioned there, that cryptocurrencies came with so much chatter whenever they moved over the last several years. And this time, we sort of caught people unaware a little bit. Um, but we've seen a strong go trend rally to uh, to some new intermediate highs. And then, like you said, pull back. And we see that pullback on weaker aqua bars. That told us that there was some weakness in the go trend, we really, of course, didn't want to see such a crash through into negative territory. We were looking for support at that level, but then look how quickly we've regained positive territory and then retested on heavy volume. And so now we're getting these trend continuation icons on uh, Bitcoin and we've moved to higher highs. So a, a go trend really well and truly in place, making higher highs, higher lows, and now another higher high as well. Excellent. And now let's uh, let's move on from uh, from this talk of cryptocurrencies and uh, take a look at our equity sector realm map. Let's get under the hood of the S and P five hundred and see how things are performing. Let me change the ticker in the top back to S and P. But this is our sector realm map. No change really this week. We can see that relatively we've got underperformance in the lower half of the map, starting with the the more economic sectors, energy and industrials, materials, even financials. And real outperformance continuing to be in the defensive sectors, staples, healthcare, utilities. And at the moment, hanging on to their go trends, albeit painting weaker aqua bars, are the growth sectors. Technologies in the top panel, discretionary in the second panel, and communications, of course, in the third panel.